Today I'm styling the shelves of my thrifted hutch and they are screaming out for some moody, floral, vintage artwork. Very specific. So we're going to create some with a little thrift flip. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and today I'm bringing you inside my new home, I think maybe for the first time. We have been living here almost three months, so we're finally feeling a little more settled. I've been like crazy hunting for antiques and goodies on Facebook Marketplace and at local thrift stores. And uh, one of my very special purchases was this cabinet behind me. It was actually delivered by a really friendly Facebook Marketplace seller the day after we took possession of the house. And so I've kind of been slowly styling the shelves and I've got a few cool antiques and pieces that I've had for years. And so what it really needs now is a little bit of art. And so I thought, why not make something? I picked up this cute little frame at Value Village and it fits perfectly on the shelves. It's just the right size. So let's head up to the studio and get started with our little thrifted art piece. You can follow along if you have a thrifted frame or canvas or just grab one of those canvas boards like an eight by 10 or five by seven at any craft or dollar store. And then when we're all done, we can do a little shelf styling. That is if Sally keeps napping. With that said, this is not gonna be a project that takes very long, maybe an hour. So I've got my little print here. It actually has this wonderful weird texture, which I think is gonna be really good because I get to use all that texture while covering up this kind of outdated print of of some mill in Ohio. <laughs> I really do like the canvas and the color of the frame though, and the size of course. So that's why I chose it. Look for a frame that you like and don't feel bad about covering up some old art and breathing new life into it. Now here's the supply rundown. We're using a little palette. You can always use a plate, yogurt lid, couple of hog hair brushes. These are a dollar store special. Now these brushes are hard to work with, but in this case where we're creating an abstracted floral, I think that's actually going to be an advantage. We'll talk more about that in a sec. For paint, I am using acrylics. These are craft quality acrylic and I have a white and an off-white. I also am going to use a light green and a dark green. These are very earthy, uh, natural looking greens. Finally, we'll use a dark brown and a black. And those are the colors we're going to start with, namely the black. I've put a little in my palette and then I'm using a nice flat brush to cover up everything. And step one is just to really create a canvas that you can work on. And in this case, I am blacking everything out. I'm just doing it carefully. It seemed like too much trouble to remove the canvas, but if if your frame is easier to remove it, you might want to do that. Uh, and then once it's all black, we want to just pick up that texture that's already there and kind of um, begin the work of doing this moody floral. Oh, I lied. I actually used a light brown as well. So two greens, two browns, black, white, and an off white. And what I did here is I took my hog hair brush and I put a little bit of brown here and there, picking up the texture ever so slightly and just creating a canvas that's a little more dynamic than just jet black. With that done, we'll let our canvas dry and we'll move on to step two, which is to paint a flower. So I put a little of the off-white, it's called buttermilk, I think, on the palette, and I mixed it with some of the light brown and gave me like a nice creamy beige, you know me and my warm grays and my creamy beiges. And I'm right in the center here near the top, I'm going to paint a flower. And you can see it's a very basic sort of floral shape, like a circle that's a little bit um, squidgy around the edges. And and then maybe I put a little flower bud off to the side just to help me fill in the space. So very, very basic. We're just kind of using the paint to block out where we want things. And this is going to be a very basic painting. We're going for a moody vintage floral that's a little bit abstracted. You can see I kind of ended up picking up a bit of the black paint there. It was extremely humid when I did this so I waited for it to dry. I picked up a little bit more texture by dry brushing a bit of the dark brown 
And then I put a little green in the palette and we're going to finish step two here by continuing our flower painting. And we're just going to add a few leaves and join the flower and the bud with a stem. So place a little leaf wherever you want one. I know the green is super dark and it's hard to see. I actually um, am getting out some light green here and mixing them together so that you can see where I've placed the leaves and the stems. But this painting is all about layers. So a vintage moody floral that's a little bit messy, a little bit abstracted. And the way we're going to do that to make it fun and not stressful is we're just going to build everything in layers, layers, layers. So here I am completing the flower. I've got uh, a flower and a bud. I've got three or four large leaves and then a stem that joins the bud and the flower together. So it's a really simple design. And already you can see my step three, which is layer, layer, layer. I started with that creamy beige on the flower. Then I used a bit of the off-white, the buttermilk color, and I started adding just more brush strokes and dots and blobs of paint. I'm not really overthinking it. I don't know acrylics that well. And frankly, I didn't really have it in me in an hour while Sally was napping to do like a super detailed painting. I wanted to create something that was like almost a little tiny bit impressionistic. So I took my tiny hog hair brush here and I'm just dotting different colors of green. I've got a light green and a darker green and I'm just putting little dots and brush marks on the leaves and I just kept layering. It was a very humid day, very humid. So I had a hair dryer handy and I just kept blow drying my piece and then I would continue with the layers. And I promise you, if you are trying to do a piece that's a little bit abstracted or you're working with a subject where you're not 100% comfortable, layering is the key. Just keep putting layer after layer, play, try this color, that color, try a different brush, a, a weird brush mark or a big sloppy brush stroke and get that hair dryer out if you have one. Use the cool setting and just blow dry it. It's nice dry paint. Keep layering on top and go over and over and eventually you're going to have a really rich, layered, dynamic piece that even if it's not I don't know, like super realistic, it has this wonderful artful quality because of all the rich layering that you've done. And that's exactly what you see me do in here, just working with the different greens and the different whites. And you can mix brown into your whites and you can mix brown into the greens too to make them look a little more natural and earthy and just play and have fun. That's really what this is. Yeah, we're creating something beautiful for our home home hopefully but we're really relaxing and taking a little joy in the process and as you know I'm talking a lot more openly on the channel about how art and uh, a creative practice has been so positive for my mental health it's like actually crazy to me I was saying to my sister it's weird that I'm going to have a million subscribers and I've never really said out loud until last month that you know I do this because it has helped me so much to be a, a more stable, more mentally well person. And the response to that video was overwhelmingly positive and everyone was sharing their stories and their feelings. And it was just so good. Like we're all out here doing this to feel better and feel good, right? So just have fun with it. And the layers, the layering and the blow drying, it really does make it like super fun and, and chill. Towards the end here, I felt I needed another color. I grabbed a burnt umber, basically just a more reddish brown. If you had red, you could mix a little red into the brown that you're using. And I just did some dotting, more dotting at the center of the flower here, kind of trying to build up a little more depth. And of course, with all those layers, we have a wonderful depth in this painting as well. It's it's abstracted, it's layered, it's fun. There, if you follow all those steps of abstraction and layering and just play, I, I think you will absolutely um, come out with a piece that you really love and that you really are excited to display in your own home. Uh, for a while there, I was like, whoa, mine's getting weird, um, but I pulled through. <laughs> 
and I kind of used the brown and dry brushed and just layered um, more color in there to make sure the black just wasn't too flat and dull. Dry brushing just means you kind of take the paint off your brush and then use like a dry-ish brush to add a little paint to the to the surface. Um, anyways, there we go. She's looking good, all done, I think. Maybe I just need a little bit more uh, white here. I kind of wanted to do some little curving lines around the flower just to give the idea of loose petals and movement. So yeah, that should do it quite happy with that. And patrons of the channel, you'll be able to print my moody vintage floral so that you could actually just print out mine and put it in a thrifted frame and enjoy it in your home. If you're not supporting the channel on Patreon, what are you waiting for? It's only $2 a month or $22 for the year. Patreon.com slash Jada Campbell. Look at this cutie in my shelf. It just completes everything and it creates a nice dramatic backdrop for some of the vintage vintage pieces that I have in here. Thanks for watching and thank you even more for subscribing. Help me get to a million. I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.